Yet another twist on the Mini theme, the rakish Roadster is based on the coupe model, offering two seats and a whole lot of fresh air fun, the first real sports car the brand has bought us. Throw back the hood on a sunny day and you'll wonder what can come close. Whatever you think about Mini, you can't deny that it's brought a spark to this small car market. Something much needed in a segment now a shadow of its former self, that of affordable roadsters. Now once, this sector hosted all manner of makers, Alfa Romeo, Toyota, Renault, Fiat, all trying to emulate the purest appeal of the cars that best encapsulate the roadster concept in the minds of modern day motorists tempted towards it. Mazda's MX-5 for those needing everyday transport, Lotus's Elise for those with something more practical in the garage. Today, unless you're prepared to consider something as outlandish as a Caterham 7, only these two cars remain. Extremes in what is a pretty extreme kind of market. But what if you could have a bit of both, along with an added dash of mini magic? Something like this, the Mini Roadster. Here then is the sixth different mini body style, following hatch, convertible, clubman estate, countryman five door and coupe. And it's the coupe that's made this variant possible, donating all the underpinnings that make this roadster quite a different proposition from a standard mini convertible. As focused as a Lotus, yet a car that you could use every day if you needed to. A bit of fun in a world that sorely needs it. And a car we're gonna put to the test. Now, a roadster should be a more involving thing than a simple convertible. You don't, after all, make something into a sports car just by chopping the top off it. And the mini convertible isn't by any stretch a sports car. This is. And all the reasons why are reasons why mini convertible customers won't like it. The sharper, dartier steering, the much firmer ride, the acute angle of the windscreen and the way its header rail is positioned close to your head. Heck, even the lack of rear seats. All of this is exactly as it should be, both to position this Roadster Mini as a model in its own right and to pitch it as a credible rival to an MX-5 or an Elise. Roadster buyers will want to drive al fresco at every opportunity, something that's possible in just five seconds after you've released this rather awkward catch, pushed up the front of the roof, and then buzzed back the electric roof. Now you can only do this at relatively low speed, but at least you don't have to stop, which will be a blessing if you're driving roof down and the heavens open. As with the coupe version of this car, you sit low down in the center of the chassis, the lightweight alloy wheels shod with Conti Sport rubber pushed right out to the corners of a body shell that's had every excess paired away for light, lithe, instant response. Now, Mini's marketing is peppered with references to go-kart handling, but in this case, that's an apt description of the feeling that you get chucking this car from corner to corner, aided by a DSC dynamic stability control system that's able to selectively brake individual wheels uh, and uh, pair back the engine power, should you get a bit over-enthusiastic. I'm less convinced, to be honest, by the rather artificial feel of the electric power steering system, even when you firm it up by pressing this little sport button down here by the gear stick. Uh, now, this is supposed to uh, produce a rotier engine note, which is difficult to detect, and give you sharper throttle response, which isn't really necessary. A more carefully thought out sport option, uh, which is standard on the John Cooper Works model, is uh, a package that gives you uh, DTC, dynamic traction control, and ELDC, electronic differential lock control, to complement the standard DSC dynamic stability control I mentioned uh, just before. Now, this is there to reduce wheel spin away from rest, and also to give you a lot more traction when coming out of tight corners. And it's certainly a tractional treat when conditions are a bit greasy. I definitely want it. For Mini Magic through faster bends, 
Engineers in search of an extra 40 kilograms of downforce have come up with the Mark's first automatically lifting spoiler, which police in 40 mile an hour zones will note automatically rises at 50 miles an hour before retracting back into the bodywork when your speed falls to uh, 37 miles an hour. It's slick, just like the ratios on the standard six speed manual gearbox designed for mid range punch from a lineup of engines which is exactly the same as that found in the Mini Coupe. In other words, you get every uh, power plant you'll find in any Mini aside from the feebler entry level ones. All derivatives have Cooper badges in homage to legendary Formula One designer John Cooper, which means that petrol power is provided by the usual BMW developed British built 1.6 in normally aspirated 122 brake horsepower form and in uh, turbocharged 184 or 211 brake horsepower trim. The fastest of uh, these is fitted to the John Cooper Works flagship variant, which is able to power from rest to 60 in just six and a half seconds on the way to a top speed of 147 miles an hour to the accompaniment of a wailing soundtrack and a crackling overrun. Even the much more affordable Cooper S version manages 0 to 60 and 7 seconds dead on the way to a top speed of 141 miles an hour, while the uh, standard normally aspirated Cooper that will mop up most sales uh, manages rest to 60 in 9.2 seconds on the way to a top speed of 124 miles an hour. But as every performance person knows, real world um, speed has uh, more to do with torque, pulling power than 0 to 60 stats. And for this, the king of the Roadster range is the derivative I'm driving here, the 143 brake horsepower 2 litre SD diesel. It uh, uh, has 305 newton metres of torque and it makes rest to 60 in 8.1 seconds on the way to a top speed of 132 miles an hour. But as with any roadster, the magic of this car has little to do with straight line speed. Roof down and being hurled from corner to corner is where this car is in its element, uh, showing off its chassis, enviable lack of body roll and tremendous grip. Achieved, you might fear, by a rock hard suspension setup that'll shake the fillings out of your teeth. Actually, though it is possible to get a mini roadster like that if you go for the top John Cooper Works variant or unwisely tick the box for sports suspension or huge optional alloys, the ride on the standard models is actually quite compliant, uh, even over really poor surfaces. Which makes this car more of a likeable travelling companion than you might expect over longer distances. Uh, top up, refinement's quite acceptable, unless it's pouring and the rain's pattering down on the thin single skinned roof. Still, you tend to forgive a real sports car, things like that. And in this Roadster we have at last a real sports car that's also a real Mini. Now, if you didn't care for the rather divisive styling of the Mini Coupe, you might find this Roadster a little more to your liking. It certainly won't be the sleekest car of this kind you've ever seen, but the 13 degrees of increased rake for the windscreen does lend it a racier look, especially when the roof's down, with a gently rising waistline that extends back to the strikingly stepped rear end that makes reverse parking so awkward. Not as awkward, it must be said, as it is in a mini convertible, for in this case, the roof folds in flush uh, with the rear deck, sitting lower, snug below its own integrated tonneau cover, rather than concertinaing back and sitting stacked on the rear end like a pram's hood, as it does in the convertible. Despite all this, over the shoulder rearward visibility still isn't the best, but then roadsters were never meant to be perfectly practical as you'll discover upon taking a seat inside, where you'll find that the racier angle of the windscreen leaves the header rail closer to your head than you might ideally like. The thickness of this rail might also be an issue for taller drivers, but it's necessary to secure the latching mechanism for the single skin canvas roof. At the onset of inclement weather, you simply push forward the toggle switch that will raise the fabric roof in just five seconds. That's 10 seconds quicker than the mini convertible can manage. But in this case, you do have to 
complete the process by manually clicking the latching mechanism into place. Hood up, you have a roof line that's 20 millimeters lower than that of the ordinary soft top mini, but getting in and out is still relatively easy. Putting the canvas covering down again is just as easy, but X mini convertible owners will be disappointed to find that there's no interim sunroof open style position of the kind that's so useful in our changeable British climate. Here, there's no in-betweens. You've either to be fully roofed down or roof up. And when the roof's in place, you'll find that it's a rather thin one with no covering for the main beams and uh, a single skin in an era where most cars of this kind are double or even triple insulated. At least German roof designers Edscher have ensured that a proper glass heated rear window is built into it. Many convertible owners who occasionally need to carry a couple of kids will be disappointed to find that in this Roadster you don't get any rear seats. Still, compensation with this car comes with its much greater luggage space, a full 240 litres, compared with the pathetic 125 litres you get in a mini convertible. Amazingly, that means there's almost as much space here as you'd find in the standard boot of a mini Clubman estate. Room then for much more than a credit card and a wash kit, though if that is all you've got, then there's a useful net at the bottom here to stop items from moving around. And if you've got longer things to carry, uh, things like skis or items of up to 1.7 metres in length, then there's a useful through hatch, which enables you to poke them into the cabin. Or indeed, if you're inside, reach back into the boot to retrieve smaller items across this useful ledge that sits behind the seats. Behind the grippy three-spoke steering wheel, it's a mixture of old and new. New and rather pleasant is the acute angle uh, of the raked back windscreen, which creates this cocooning feel in the cabin. More familiar are the usual chrome toggle switches and the traditionally huge speedometer that dominates the center of the smartly trimmed dash. Now this is a triumph of style over function. So difficult to view is its outer needle readout that you tend to ignore it in favor of the digital display in the center of the circular rev counter that sprouts from the steering column directly in front of you. And if you're going to be driving top down on longer trips, then you'll want to slip on this mesh wind deflector that Mini provides as an option to slot between these lovely chromed rollover hoops. Expect to pay somewhere in the 18 to 25,000 pound bracket for your Mini Roadster. Now, to put that into perspective, you're looking at a premium of somewhere between 1,000 and 1,300 pounds over the cost of the Mini Coupe upon which this model is based. And if you're considering this Roadster as an alternative to the more sensible but less sporty Mini Convertible, well, the top John Cooper Works versions of both body styles cost the same, but elsewhere in the range, the Roadster Premium is between 400 and 700 pounds, depending on the model that you're looking at. And if uh, you're considering a Roadster with the six-speed automatic gearbox, then you'll need to allow a premium of 1,100 pounds. So how does that compare against obvious rivals? Well, there aren't many in the affordable Roadster category these days, and from what there is, it's pretty clear what car um, Mini sees as its biggest competitor. Mazda's MX-5 1.8i costs exactly the same as a Mini Roadster in 122 brake horsepower Cooper guys, while a Mini Roadster Cooper S will actually save you a few hundred pounds on a comparably performing Mazda MX-5 2.0-litre i. Unless you're prepared to consider something as uh, outlandish as a Caterham 7, which is priced from around £17,000, then there isn't really anything else to consider uh, if you're looking for a, a Roadster at the £20,000 price point. That's unless you're uh, seriously looking at blowing nearly £25,000 on a top mini Roadster John Cooper Works, at which point you might start to consider whether it might be uh, worth saving up another £4,000 to get a Lotus Elise. And if this is the car of your dreams, 
well, pretty much all the basic equipment uh, items you'd expect to find are present and correct. So you get alloy wheels, air conditioning, a decent quality MP3 compatible CD stereo with an aux in socket and a DAB digital radio, power heated mirrors, and the rear parking sensors that'll come in very useful when you're trying to uh, slot this car into a very awkward parking space. Rearward visibility isn't great. Safety kit uh, runs to the usual electronic assistance for traction, braking and stability control. You get these chromed rollover hoops and twin uh, head and side thorax airbags. But of course your dealer will hope that this will be just the starting point for a far reaching foray into the options list. To be fair, you're gonna struggle to sell this car on without at least a few extra cost must haves. I'd suggest that these should include the eight year fixed price servicing package, heated seats, and the chili pack. Now chili spec includes the sports seats, the wind deflector, and the extended storage hatch that this car really shouldn't be without, as well as most of the special stuff you'll want, like bison on headlights, front fog lamps, a uh, multifunction steering um, wheel, a trip computer, and Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone. Keen drivers will want to consider the DTC Dynamic Traction Control System and the EDLC Electronic Differential Lock Control Setup, both elements standard only on the flagship John Cooper Works model. Lots of acronyms, I know, but what it boils down to is that you get, uh, with this package fitted, less wheel spin away from rest, and once on the move, you'll be able to get traction down earlier into corners and fire the car from bend to bend. And if you've any budget left after that, well, I wouldn't bother with the always open timer there to rather pointlessly record how long the top has been down for. But you probably will want to consider the wide range of entertainment, uh, navigation and communication options uh, accessible via the mini connected system. Now, this is able to hook you up to web radio, Google services, RSS news feeds and give you in-car access to Facebook and Twitter. Plus, you might also want to look at the uh, premium Harman Kardon stereo system. Turning to the outside, the more extrovert will want to consider bonnet stripes available in three different colours to cover the bonnet, the boot lid and the rear apron. What you can't alter is the shade of the convertible roof, uh, which can uh, be ordered only in black, in keeping mini sets with British Roadster tradition. Mini's minimalism efficiency package uh, ensures that this car will remain as affordable to run as any model of this sort should be. So uh, thanks to things like brake energy regeneration, uh, an electric power steering system that draws absolutely nothing from the engine in the straight air position, uh, a needs based uh, system for drawing power from ancillary controls and most importantly uh, a stop start engine setup that will uh, cut the engine when you don't need it when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights this uh, Mini is able to record running cost figures that better those of a rival Mazda MX-5 by as much as 20% if you want specifics then you'll find this Roadster in Cooper guys able to deliver 49.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out 133 grams per kilometer of CO2 figures hardly affected by retuning this engine to 140 uh, 84 brake horsepower in the Cooper S variant, uh, a, uh, a car which manages 47.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 139 grams per kilometre of CO2. For perhaps though the ultimate mix of power and parsimony, you'll need the 143 brake horsepower 2 litre Cooper SD diesel Roadster variant that I'm driving here. Now this can return your thrills at the same time as managing 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and putting out just 118 grams per kilometre of CO2. A gear shift indicator on the dash should help ordinary owners get somewhere near those kinds of returns on a day-to-day -day basis. And while we're talking about day-to-day -day running costs, uh, insurance ought to be affordable at Group 19 on the 1 to 50 scale for the entry-level Cooper model. But bear in mind that beyond the Cooper, uh, the uh, groupings take quite a hike. Uh, you're talking about Group 32 if you go for the Cooper S, uh, and uh, Group 37 for the top of the range JCW, John Cooper Works model. 
Um, servicing costs are an area in which uh, Mini excels and the uh, groundbreaking TLC Mini servicing pack is still available for five years or 50,000 miles at around the 250 pound mark. Personally, I'd pay an extra 25 quid to get the same pack in XL form where you get eight years and 80,000 miles of cover. And that should help with resale values, which independent experts uh, estimate after three years will be around 14% better than you get from a rival Mazda MX-5. When it comes to affordable open top sports cars that drive well and are usable every day, the market isn't exactly swollen with talent. There's the Evergreen Master MX-5, but beyond that, you have to step up to much pricier cars like the Audi TT Roadster and the BMW Z4. Slotting in between these two is an open goal that this Mini surely can't miss. A little more extreme than an MX-5, a little easier to own and a lot more affordable than a Lotus Elise, this Mini Roadster has been most carefully targeted with a very different appeal to any of the brand's previous soft top models. Buying one will be an unashamed indulgence as the purchase of any sports car should be. The beginning of a driving experience that promises fun without too many hardcore compromises. It's the Mini method of sports car ownership and you can see why many in this market are going to like it.